feel like because we're in an office, I, I don't want to raise my voice. Hey, what's up? We're Cancer Bats. We're in an Exclaim chat room in the Exclaim office. We're keeping our voices down because everyone's still working. We're going to answer a bunch of fan questions. Oh, no. On Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. As quietly as possible. As quietly as possible. I don't want to get in trouble. I'm terrified. <laughs> Ian Blurton spoke loud and got kicked out. That was in 1998. He's never had the cover since. Maybe we should speak a little louder. Yeah. Fuck I you. I feel what you're doing it now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll do this in regular voice. We've been assured by the staff that exclaim that it's okay if we project in normal inside voices is that most of the staff are wearing headphones now <laughs> listening to the new Ghostface. So, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this correctly, so I apologize. And maybe on April 8th, when we meet at Askeviser, Ask, Askeviser, that's his Instagram handle, he asks, how do you feel about birthing the giant now? Do you still feel the same as, same band, do you still feel as the same band as that? Smiley face. Sorry, that took me off guard. That. See you guys the 8th of April in Copenhagen. So... I'm going to let Jay answer that, because he wasn't in the band. I feel totally the same. <laughs> As a fan. As a fan, going back and playing those songs. I mean, you were around, so that was kind of cool. It was pretty cool. But now it's better It's better playing the songs now. It's, it's better being in the band than being <laughs> on the other side. I'm behind the curtain now. It was fun to watch Jay Mosh to those songs, though. <laughs> yeah, when we used to play London, Ontario, Jay would just dominate the pit. I feel like that was like my like my my audition tape. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, this guy can totally play in our band. He can mosh super hard. Yeah, it was like Henry Rollins, like when he sang for Black Flag, and they were like, "Whoa, that was cool!" Like Jay, like smashed two beers and flipped us all off, and then we were like, "We should get that guy to play bass in our band." <laughs> That's pretty much it. <laughs> so yeah, I would say we we all feel the same way. I would still smash beers over my head and flip a table and flip you guys off. Now. Every, now. Every night on tour. Every yeah. Night on tour. <laughs> Welcome the year I'm from the reckless son of another gun. So, next question from Instagram. This is from DallyCat1010 or 1010. Or 1010 or one, one zero <laughs> binary. Oh, yeah. DallyCat, again, apologies if we're not <laughs> nailing it what you were <laughs> intending. Anyways, he or she asks, have you guys ever been in any arguments or major disputes with any bands you have been on tour with that has caused any problems on tour? Um, we're pretty easygoing dudes. I can't really think of like anything that we've ever like fought with a band. I do remember one time, this is like maybe when you guys weren't even in the band, but it was like when we toured with Nora Maybe you guys weren't even I in the band. I wasn't there. Yeah. And it was like, we were young, and I was like, full of hijinks. <laughs> and we threw uh, a bottle of uh, of urine that was in <laughs> like a water bottle, like someone had urinated in a bottle, and I threw it. Because you hear about like bands battling, van wars, you know? And so I threw Fun. this bottle of pee at uh, Nora and it like smoked their windshield and then like when we got to the venue and i saw carl who is the singer of nora uh who's like a few years older than me maybe a bit more serious at the time he was just like not cool man <laughs> i guess he was terrified at what had happened he didn't know that it was just me throwing this bottle and uh <laughs> And I like that was like that was it for me. We were definitely like cool. We we're friends now. Carl later signed us to a Good Fight, so we we're, were like we we're, we we're homies. But I remember at that time I was like really terrified that I had like screwed up huge. It was the end of the band. Yeah, or that he was gonna kill me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, Ugh. so yeah, that's probably the closest. <laughs> From Twitter, at Danko Jones asks, did you have a Commodore 64? Uh, what three's company landlord did you like the best, Furley or Roper? I think Furley's a lock. 
Like he's way goofier. I like that you both came to me with the microphone as well. <laughs> Jay is an authority. I'm an authority on Three's Company. On Three's Company. Yeah. I'll say Furley. Roper, he's too hard ass. Furley. Furley was hilarious. Great for hijinks on the show. Um, I didn't have a Commodore 64, but I did have an Atari 2600. Mm -hmm. um, for those reading this at home who are wondering what that is, it was like a pre Nintendo. Uh, game console and then uh, Commodore 64 was like super old, yeah, game console that yeah. had like Frogger and like, Impossible. yeah, my yeah, had some OG games. You have to be like born closer to 1980 than to 1990 to understand that reference, yeah, my maybe to understand both those references, <laughs> <laughs> you maybe need to be closer to the 80s. I was born in 1980, I'm currently 35. Danko Jones, I think, is currently 45. <laughs> so he 100% knows a what a Commodore 64. 64 is. And and he really knows Three's Company. I bet he could repair a Commodore 64. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyways, moving on. At Jedlam. I think I nailed that one. Yeah. Like Bedlam with a Jed. Uh, Asks... You guys claim the title motherfucking cancer bats. What's the total numbers of mothers you fucked? Ooh, Jedlam. <laughs> that is a that is a really harsh comment. Um, like we're gentlemen. We yeah. don't kiss and tell. Don't kiss and tell. Oh, it's Danko. From Danko Jones. <laughs> Danko Jones was free today. <laughs> <laughs> He asked, what aspects of my band do you find to be your favorites? And what are your favorite songs of my band? <laughs> I think one of my favorite aspects is your cocky swagger. True. Um, I don't know if he still goes by these, but I really liked that back in the day he had a lot of monikers. And one was the Mocha Moose. I don't know if people still call Danko Jones the Mocha Moose. But that one, I loved that one. I thought that was great. Um, one of my favorite songs is White Cadillac. Uh, for OG I saw him play just like recently And they played that song and it was so heavy It was almost like Hatebreed Playing White Cadillac <laughs> like He just like was like belting it out And the riff was in my head for like Literally like the next nine days I bought a white Cadillac And it's just like yeah It's such a classic banger um, But the new record is, is sweet And we're yeah, not just saying that to pump up your tires Danko. <laughs> into drugs. Yeah, into Getting drugs into, is like the yeah, best, the best song, song. It's amazing. Yeah, there you go. Good dude. Good band. Great question. Great new record. Huge tongue. <laughs> <laughs> Next question uh, from Twitter at Brad Seed. Nailed asks, it. Yeah, I feel like that one's You're cool. Like, like Bad Seed. What's up? My friends call me Brad Seed. <laughs> he has like a leather jacket, like white out on the back. Brad Seed. Anyways, he asks, how do you balance the power of groovy riffs with the energy of hardcore? Where's the sweet spot? Yeah, that's Jay. That sweet me. spot is Jay. It is Jay. It's just me. It's me and the scope being opposite forces coming together. Like you're on a, a seesaw. Of yeah, of positive vibes. Who's winning? Right. Who's more positive? The hardcore or the groove? Scobie's Pantera squeals versus your hardcore stomps. That's right. That's the sweet spot. There's like a tipping point. Liam's Liam's, Liam's right in the, the middle. middle. <laughs> <laughs> What's gonna happen? And I'm Mikey's in the back on the merry-go-round by myself. I was gonna say you're running, <laughs> you're running around the outside, ready to catch you, whoever's about to fall. <laughs> I got you. I'm the concerned parent. <laughs> no, Mikey's like the badass teenager selling weed in the park. <laughs> <laughs> selling. I've got a leather jacket that says Brad <laughs> <Badass>. Seed. <laughs> From Instagram, oh, I'm going to mess this up, uh, AZU434 asks, what do you feel are the biggest hurdles when making a new album? Uh, writing songs yeah, is a pretty say, riffs? huge hurdle. <laughs> <laughs> Riffing? The one thing that I, we always laugh about with other friends who are in uh, bands 
when it comes to writing a record that's like beyond when you're like living on a floor and being poor and like like that's all you have and then you're like your band does well and you like have an apartment with your girlfriend and the life rules <laughs> sometimes it's like tough to be like man everything's awesome like am i just gonna write a record about like how much i like eating ice cream and like going out to dinner and like hanging out with my friends <laughs> you don't have as much angst so sometimes those are a bit of a hurdle not like you need to like manufacture them but sometimes when you're looking back on things when things are good the rough the rough things don't look as harsh look as bad but when you're like in it and somebody's like smashed out your van window and stole all your clothes you're like Pfft. Definitely writing a song about this. <laughs> <laughs> now, our last question. Also from Danko. From Danko. He asks, what's your favorite question? Maybe this question. Any question from Danko. I was going to say any question where they're like, what's your favorite kind of ice cream or cookie? I was like, <laughs> easy ones. You Liam, weren't, what is you your weren't, favorite kind of ice cream? Rocky Road. <laughs> What's your favorite cookie? Chocolate chip. Actually, my answer would really be all ice cream and all cookies. I've definitely never come across either that I would turn my <laughs> nose at. I'm not too discerning when it comes to No, never to taken dessert. a bite of a cookie and been like, ew. Yeah. It's never yeah, happened. Yeah, there's no like bacon ice cream that I've encountered because I... You know, could say that for pizza, but there's definitely a lot of pizza with meat and things like that that I don't want to eat. But there's no ice cream that's like, with chicken. (laughs) Yet. Grody. (laughs) So, yeah, that's it. Thanks for having us, exclaimchatroom.ca. This has been a blast. Thanks, Danko. Yeah, thanks for asking us a lot of questions, Danko. This is fun. And make sure you watch Danko's chat room coming up soon. Blasting him with tweets. Hey, what's up? Welcome to Cancer Bats Cookie Talk. This week's topic: fudgios. Cookie text and the fudgio experience. Try and eat one deck only. I feel like the fact that fudgios are smaller than a lot of cookies makes you want to eat more. Yeah. Discuss. Well, it balances out. <laughs> it's like Chewy Chips Ahoy. Like, try and not eat four at once. Mary? <laughs> <laughs>